One of the most important factors to the success of the Sohai District is understanding the demographics that make up the district and the surrounding neighborhood. In May of 2008, local initiatives support corporation LISC with its subsidiary LISC Metro Edge of Chicago and the City of Milwaukee presented a comprehensive marketing analysis of the Sohai District. This marketing analysis was a product of two teams, LISC Metro Edge and Michael J. Byrne of MJB Consulting. In part one of this presentation, Michael and I review the social, economic, and racial makeup of the Sohai District. If you are a resident, property owner, government representative, and current or potential business owner, this information may be practical in its tone, however priceless to the success of the revitalization of the district. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's the point I'm making about uh, the population, uh, which is roughly 10,400 people, uh, has been in decline, um, and the median household income is, is rather low. Mm -hmm. that, that's partly attributable to the high percentage of students. Any area that has a large number of students will have a, a low median household income. Okay. But moving to the next slide... Uh, you know, the other side of that coin is that the population density is very high, roughly 14,500 people per square mile. That's a very high, uh, and largely due to the high percentage of multifamily buildings, which is often considered a negative, um, but it, in, in certain respects, it, it, does, um, it does provide for a population density that can uh, more than compensate for the low household incomes. And you see that. The, the buying power per square mile is more than double that for the county as a whole. Um, now, well, just real quick, though, for the population density, can you compare that to another major city or another major neighborhood? Yes. Where do where do we where do we fall in, in as far as the population density at fourteen over fourteen thousand per square mile? Well, uh, to give you a sense of it nationally, um, New York City, which is easily the most dense city in the United States, is at about twenty one thousand people per square mile. Um, the second densest city in the United States a surprise to some is actually San Francisco, which is at about 15,000 per square mile. Um, what you find generally is that the, uh, the Midwestern, I mean, so mid-Atlantic cities like the Philadelphias and the Washingtons and the Baltimores tend to be at, you know, eight to 10,000 per square mile, and Midwestern cities tend to be at 6,000 per square mile, uh, and Sunbelt, you know, sprawling Sunbelt cities at about 3,000 per square mile. So if you look at 14,500, um, that is more than double the typical density in a Midwestern city like Milwaukee. In fact, I think Milwaukee as a whole is at about 6,000 per square mile. So it's uh, more than double the density uh, in most Midwestern cities, including Milwaukee. Uh, and it's higher than a lot of mid-Atlantic cities, and it even approaches uh, the nation's second densest city, which is San Francisco. So it's, it, it is, um, it's, you know, it, it definitely uh, is up there. Um, you know, looking, at, looking at it in contrast to to other to other uh, cities. Uh, okay, continue on. Continue on. Uh, did you want to mention anything about the, the? You mentioned here that despite low medium incomes, there's twice as many households earning thirty thousand per square mile as Milwaukee County. Yes, and what you know, one of the uh, nuances of median household income is that it's a median. However. Um, a median household income doesn't tell the whole story because in absolute numbers, because of the high densities, uh, you can still have a very large number of middle and upper income households, uh, even with a low uh, median. Okay. So here in, in the Sohai district, you have uh, you know, low median household incomes, but you have twice as many actual households earning uh, $30,000 a year or more on a per square mile basis uh, than the county as a whole. Okay, okay. Another way of putting that is, uh, okay, the median might be low, but because you have so many people, um, you're gonna have still a large absolute number of households that, that, that are at the upper end um, income-wise. I see what you're saying. It goes back to the population density with so many people. It all goes back to population density. Uh, and that's why medians are not always the, the, the most important thing to look at when it comes to a 
to, to a dense inner city setting like this one. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the next slide. Um, yeah, the other factor is obviously when you're talking uh, uh, possible customers, uh, you're not just talking about the people who live in the neighborhood, especially in, in mixed-use sort of settings like, like this one. Uh, you have within one mile uh, 24,000 employees, which is a large number uh, for what is otherwise uh, a neighborhood commercial corridor. Mm -hmm. You have Marquette students, and obviously a number of those are already counted as residents if they live in the Sohai district. But okay. uh, you know, at the same time, there are a lot of Marquette students who don't live in the Sohai district. They live further east, uh, and they are not counted as residents, and yet they are a potential market for the street, as we'll discuss later. Okay. Um, the Rave Eagles Ballroom is, 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 is a, is a um, traffic generating event venue that's, that's near uh, 27th Street. And also the drive by automobile traffic is substantial. 20,000 cars per day is, is, is a sort of milestone uh, when it comes to traffic counts. And 27th Street does exceed that uh, number. That's about 22,000. And, and Wisconsin Avenue adds another 16. So you do have a lot of pass by traffic as well. Sounds good. Moving on to the next slide. Um, yeah, now the, the ethnic distribution in the neighborhood, it's, it's largely, it's, it seems largely African American, about 69%, um, uh, and then 15% white, 8% Hispanic, uh, and 4% Asian. Um, I do want to mention it's seen in, at least as the mainstream manager, I, it seems to me that we do ha have a growing Hispanic and Asian population. Did you find that in your research or were you even able to look at that data? Uh, well, we found it in as much as it, it showed up in this ethnic distribution here. We okay. See it yet reflected on the um, on the street itself, on Twenty Seventh Street itself, in Correct. terms of the retail mix. That's right. Correct. There could be many reasons for that. Uh, most notably, that um, we're not that far from the South Side, and there is obviously no shortage of Hispanic-oriented uh, businesses there. Mm -hmm. So that might part of the reason uh, but yeah it's it's a population which is growing uh, has yet to manifest on 27th street okay moving on to the next slide uh, psychographics let's talk about that yeah, psychographics is um, is a relatively new dimension of market analysis uh, rather than looking at markets in in purely quantitative terms rather than just looking at you know median household incomes or or uh, property values, sorts of you know, um, concrete numbers like that. What psychographic does is it looks instead at the lifestyles, the sensibilities, the aspirations um, of, of of people who live in, in certain markets. And we all we all understand uh, these sorts of distinctions intuitively. Uh, there's there's kind of a sense that your typical Walmart shopper and your typical Target shopper, for instance, are 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 different in certain ways. In certain ways in which they, uh, certain ways in which they um, uh, understand and, and, and experience, uh, you know, the consumer world. And so, you know, that's, that, that's something we, we intuitively understand. And what psychographics basically does is it, it, it kind of puts that into more formal terms. Okay, okay. And, I, and, I, and uh, as, you, as you highlighted in here in the slide here, uh, it may be offensive to some people, some of the terms used. Yeah, it, 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 there are, it, it may be offensive, and, and, you know, some of the criticisms that it gets, most notably that sometimes it serves merely to reinforce stereotypes, uh, some of those criticisms are, are, are completely valid. Um, and, and, you know, that, so the, the reaction that it can get, you know, is understandable. Mm -hmm. um, but for, for better or for worse, it's a tool that's increasingly used by the retailers themselves in deciding where to locate, so we need to understand them. So um, and, you know, so it, it's kind of a sort of thing of regardless of what we think about these sorts of, of psychographic, you know, classification systems, we, we, we need to take, you know, take them into account in analyzing, uh, in, in understanding how retailers analyze. So let's dive right into this, then, the psychographics. Let's go on to the next slide. Next slide. Um, 